This is the QAV 400 ARF kit and in the next couple of videos I'm going to be documenting uh, my build progress. I'm pretty excited about this and ready to get it in the air. But before I do I wanted to talk you through some of the components that come with the QAV 400 almost ready to fly kit as well as some of the things that are missing. Maybe I just overlooked them or let's assume that you have these uh, components. And then finally I'll wrap up with just the reason I chose the QAV 400 over the 500 because I've received quite a few emails asking uh, my preference. First things first, you have a build manual that you can find on QAV400.com and then a whole bunch of nuts and bolts, spacers for the frame, these orange bobbins which I'm most excited about because of the uh, clean and dirty separation of the frame which these go on the dirty part of the frame and should isolate vibration from the GoPro. And here's the frame, bottom plate with the power distribution built in. And these are the plates for the what they call the dirty section where your arms will mount and the bobbins will absorb the vibration and then kind of your top section of frame where you mount all your electronics. And here's the power distribution plate up close, made out of G10. So your battery connector, your ESC connectors, with four 30 amp Simon K ESCs, four 1100 kV motors, and with these you get the nice long leads. Each motor has its own bag of mounting accessories which is good. Don't know if you guys have ever received a motor with no prop adapter or mounting plate but that's always a pain. Some nice anodized aluminum arms, pretty lightweight, feel really durable. Now I've read that in the aluminum, in the case of a hard crash, generally has a tendency to bend whereas G10 may flex and not break. So uh, we'll see how these aluminum arms do. I've never flown with aluminum arms before. Four Grobner 8x5 E-props and the 3300 milliamp 4S LiPo. This isn't part of the ARF kit, so this is a separate purchase, but my first time to fly with a 4S battery. For starters, I'm going to just default to my 3S. Fly something that, you know, I'm comfortable with, and then uh, we'll give it some 4S turbo charge and see how that plays out. The two things I assumed or really, I guess, didn't expect were uh, the bullet connectors with the ESCs were not part of the kit. And the other issue was just the pigtail that you would solder for your battery connector. So in my case, I'll be using an XT60, so I had to order an XT60 uh, battery connector. Now getting to the question of why the QAV400 over the QAV500, I put my TBS Discovery down to give a reference. You can see that these arms are almost an inch and a half to two inches uh, longer than the QAV400. So if you think about the QAV500 being a 500 millimeter frame versus 400, if you do the conversion that's about one inch shorter per arm. So a QAV500 is fairly close to the size of the Discovery FPV quad. So for me it didn't make sense to get another large FPV platform I wanted to size down and what that means is it weighs less. The QAV400 frame weighs 375 grams versus the QAV500 is, is 500 grams. Less weight in the air which means your replacement parts, your props, motors, batteries are, are generally going to be smaller. So that ultimately translates to less weight which means less money. And from what I've seen of both the QAV400 and 500, the GoPro video footage is pretty amazing with literally no vibrations and what excites me most about the QAV400 quad is just the peppiness, the way some of these guys are flying it and how responsive and agile it is. So that was an overview of the QAV400 ARF kit and why I chose it over the 500. And in the coming days I'll be posting uh, my build progress. Hope that you'll follow along. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and thank you for watching.